trip, and she's going to tell you all about it. I don't want to take the thunder of that. She's got some pictures to share as well. But she went on a missions trip. She has a heart for missions. She loves the Lord, and God is doing amazing, wonderful things with her life and in her life. And uh, we love it that, that our young people yes. are on fire for God. Yes. Right? Yes. So often it's just portrayed, well, where are the young people? Well, God is igniting a fire. Yes. And a fire that cannot be extinguished. A fire that he has put there. And I pray that you will hear her heart today. And that you will hear the voice of the Lord behind her every word. So we want to welcome Sarah to share as God has laid on her heart. I told her she had all day to do it. So, um, so I hope that you are not in a rush. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, move that so you can hear me. Good morning, church. Happy Independence Day. As some of you know, at the beginning of June, I was away on a two-week mission trip called Service Adventure with Accelerated Christian Student Ministries. Now, this service adventure took place in Fort Pierce, Florida. It was very hot, but, <laughs> but that's not the only thing that I learned. And although the location of Service Adventure changes yearly, the purpose and goal stays the same to assist students in using their God-given skills to be amazing servants for him. Now, I didn't come up with that. I took it off of their website. <laughs> it was such a blessing to see the students that I was with use their skills and to also see the skills that God's given me be developed during those two weeks, and even skills that I didn't even know I had because I certainly did not know that I was skilled in being in a puppet play because before that week, I hadn't touched a puppet since I was in fourth grade. <laughs> so I was a little bit surprised when we were sitting around the table deciding the roles for our puppet play, and they say, okay, who will play Florence the Flamingo? And about five people of my team pointed at me. And I tried to slide under the table so I could not be being pointed at. It didn't work out. I ended up playing the part of the Flamingo three times that <laughs> during those two weeks. But. So as the name suggests, these two weeks at Service Adventure were full of two things, service and adventure. And that's what we signed up for when we agreed to go. That's what I signed up for, at least. And I know that my fellow students also signed up for that. We didn't really know how much of an adventure we were really in for. We also did not know how much service we'd be, we would be doing. But we should have guessed that there would have been a lot more service than we were expecting, and that it would be working long hours, and sometimes getting up earlier than we wanted to, most times getting up earlier than we wanted to, and sometimes it meant going to bed earlier than we wanted to so that we could get up early, but sometimes it meant staying up much later than we had expected so that we could continue to get our work done, because we had things planned out for the next day, and we couldn't carry work over from one day to another. That just didn't work out. So there was a specific theme chosen for service adventure, and there's one for every year. But the theme for this year, I think, is very fitting with what we went through in 2020 and what we're going through in 2021. And the theme was, Lead Me to the Rock. And there were some scriptures chosen to support this theme, three scriptures. The first scripture is Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, and I'm reading it from the King James Version. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all, those, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. We found this verse to be very fitting right in the first few days of Service Adventure. Now, there were two teams for Service Adventure, the red team and the blue team. I was on the red team, and I'm adopting you all onto the red team as well. So, we, each team has a team leader and a young leader. And now the young leader is the one kind of carrying out the orders of the main leader and making sure that everyone is where they need to be when they need to be there and generally making sure that things are running smoothly. Well, we had a couple of mishaps in the first couple of days that caused us to be without both of our young leaders for the first few days. So we were kind of 
out without a captain <laughs> for a bit, and we were, we had picked some people who might know how to be a young leader to be the stand-in young leader, but those people were not expecting to be considered the young leaders, and so they were about as clueless as we were. Although, when our young leaders did arrive, my young leader, her name was Osha, she said to me, I'm the young leader, and I know about as much as you do. <laughs> and considering it was my first year, I did not know very much. <laughs> but the young leaders really did help us a lot in growing and learning and even pushing us, saying, you should really do this. You should, I think you would do this well. And even when we were saying, no, 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 I do not want to do this. I am not ready to do this. The young leaders would push us and encourage us to do that. And a service adventure would not be the same without them. And I'm so glad that after those first couple days, they did manage to get there. But even through those couple days that we were without them, the leaders that we did have, our team leader and our fearless leader, Miss Jean, it reminded us of this verse and that even though we didn't know what was going on, we didn't understand why this was happening and why we were without our leaders, that God had a plan, he was in control, his work and his way was perfect. And that really taught us that no matter what happens, even when it doesn't go according to our plans. And there were several times during those weeks when things didn't go according to our plans, whether it be with the weather or with not having our supplies. I mean, I know one time, now my team went to a school to minister to the kids there and um, build desks for the students. Now, the school was two hours away from our base location. And we had to pack up early in the morning all the stuff we were gonna need and then go. Well, one day we went there and we got there and we realized we did not have everything we needed. We didn't have all the power tools we needed, we didn't have the screws we needed, but thankfully there was a store nearby and we were able to get some things. But still, it took time out of our day and then it started raining and we were trying to work outside with building wooden desks. It does, and I'm sure most of you know that wood and water do not mix well. So we had to try and move all of the desks, and there were 15 of us on a team, but so we were all trying to run, carry the power tools, carry the offices that some, some of us weren't very tall, and the offices were about as tall as we were, so we're trying to carry them under the cover of the pavilion so that it didn't get wet. And then we found lizards in our workspace, and it just wasn't working out the first day. <laughs> but... We had another chance to go, but then things kind of weren't working well the second time, too, because even though we got all our stuff put together, we were doing something else that day as well, and we were presenting our puppet skit and our... Well, we didn't know we were doing this, but we were also going to be doing our group Bible speaking. And I don't know if any of you know what group Bible speaking is, but if you don't, I'll tell you. So a group Bible speaking is when a group of people, in our case it was our team, pick a passage of scripture or a few verses, and they'll like act it out for people and trying to emphasize the main points of the scriptures. So we had chosen Psalm 139 verses 7 to 14 because that was the theme that the red team had chosen for the two weeks of service adventure, to, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And now I'm going off my topic a little bit, but something interesting I noticed when I got back was that Pastor Peterson preached using those verses, or some of them, in our in the teenage Bible class, we call it 9 a.m. theology. They were using those scriptures. And in the in youth group, we were using those scriptures. And so, and even in VBS is also a similar theme. And so I come back from Service Adventure thinking that our theme was fearfully and wonderfully made, and I come back home to find out that everyone's theme is fearfully and wonderfully made. And doesn't that really show you that God is working in his church everywhere and saying the same thing? Because even down in Fort Pierce, Florida, he was saying the same thing to the red team and the blue team that he was saying to All Nations Worship Center, youth group, Bible group, and Sunday congregation. Now I'll go back on to my topic of trusting God. But the second scripture we had also deals with trusting God, and it's 2 Samuel 22, verses 32 to 33. I'm still reading from the King James Version. But this verse says, For who is God, save the Lord? And who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength and power. 
and he maketh my way perfect. Now, what really sticks out to me about this verse is God is my strength and power. If there's one thing we knew we needed during those two weeks at Service Adventure, it was God's strength and power to see us through. Because we were working for something that was bigger than ourselves. And if we tried to rely on our strength, we were going to fail, plain and simply. We weren't going to make it. Now, Service Adventure oftentimes pushed us out of our comfort zones and forced us to do things that we weren't exactly used to doing, like puppet plays. Or maybe for you, it would have been using the power tools that you had never touched or even seen before. Now, thankfully, thankfully, no one actually got hurt using the power tools. Well, one person did, but the power tool wasn't on, so it doesn't count. So <laughs> Uh, no one drilled any holes through their fingers, no one cut their hands off with the circular saw, and no one tried to file their fingernails with a sander. They made it very clear we couldn't do that on the first day. And they were showing us all the tools, going, this is a sander, it's the one that's least likely to hurt you. But you can still get hurt with it, so don't do anything stupid and do not try to file your fingernails. Gentlemen, you cannot use this to shave. And then they go through the different tools, the drill, also not very likely to hurt you, but it can hurt you, so don't do something stupid. A jigsaw, this one is very likely to hurt you if you do something stupid, but if you don't do something stupid, you're not going to get hurt. So basically, when we were with the power tools, the thing we kept saying was, don't do something stupid. Don't do something stupid. Keep your hands clear of the blades, the drills, and whatever you call the thing on the sander. <laughs> can you tell that I wasn't with the power tools very much? <laughs> There was a good reason for this, because the one time I did end up being allowed to use the drill, I said, wow, people don't trust me much with these things. And then my teammate goes, we never said we trusted you. <laughs> but we all had to learn to use them, because if we become missionaries on a foreign mission field, and we don't know how to use a sander or a jigsaw, how are we supposed to cut wood to build a school or a church building? if we don't know how to do it, because we let all our teammates at Service Adventure do it, because we didn't like to. So all of us had to, and all of us had to be in the puppet play. Although not all of us were playing a lead role, all of us were involved in some way, because we needed to be prepared for whatever we were going to do in the future. Maybe we weren't going to be full-time missionaries, but maybe we were going to be full-time Sunday school teachers or pastors, but we didn't know. And we knew that what everything we were doing at Service Adventure was preparing us for something in the future. And although we might not use it again for years and years and years, we would use it again. And no matter how small it seemed that we were using it, we would be using it. Maybe we were using our puppet skills to entertain our grandchildren years and years and years later. Maybe we were using our carpentry skills to build churches in a country that's far away that we weren't even thinking of when we were in Fort Pierce, Florida. We didn't know. But we knew that we had to do whatever our leaders told us to do because it was preparing us for something. And even when we weren't comfortable with it, we remembered the verse, 2 Samuel 22, verses 32 to 35. We remembered that God is our strength and power, even with things that we don't think we're ready for, even with things that we never thought we'd ever do. I honestly never thought I would be going on a missions trip when I was 16. I thought I was going to wait until I was older and had been through Bible college and had gotten all the training that I needed, but little did I know I would be going and training while I needed the training. But it worked out because service adventure, I know, was a blessing to me. And I don't want to be that person that says, well, I went to serve others, but really I got served. But, well, I went to serve others, but really I got served. <laughs> So basically I'm saying I don't want to be that person because everyone says that, but I'm going to be that person because it's true. So, Now for me, what really pushed me out of my comfort zone where I really needed to rely on God was being around so many people that I had never met. Like, I went and I got on the plane at Logan Airport. I was with my mom the whole time, but then we get to Orlando and I said goodbye mom and I climb in the car and then there's six other people there whom I've never met. And now that first day was, well, I think we can all agree that a first day with people you've never met can be pretty awkward. And it was. That car ride was, well, in the car, there were six, seven people, including me. Four people were speaking Spanish, two were sleeping, the other one was me. <laughs> so, 
my friend Caitlin was joking with me and teasing me on the last night saying, well, Sarah, you've really come out of your shell these two weeks because the first day I met you, when you were in the car, you got in and you sat exactly like this and you did not move at all. I wasn't even sure you were breathing at some point. <laughs> But, wow, I'm so proud of you because I really thought you were going to be that person who didn't talk to anyone the two weeks. But look, you're talking to everyone. You've somehow become friends with everyone, including the guys. And we generally stay away from them. Well, it was hard to stay away from anyone because there were 30 of us there, including the leaders. And now... All the girls had the girls' dorm, so we were all packed together in the room with our sleeping mats, sometimes right up against each other, because there wasn't a lot of room. And the guys were on the, f uh, their, their dorm was upstairs, right above ours now. Service adventure really involves teamwork. And that's why you have to get comfortable with your teammates, because you're going to be working with them a lot. Now, sometimes working with them involves all the girls finding the smallest member and hoisting them up on their shoulders so they can bang on the ceiling to go tell the guys to quiet down and go to sleep. Because, apparently, they like to have wrestling matches at 12 in the morning. I'm not kidding. I, could ha I have um, some videos of us filming the ceiling because we can see it going down and bouncing at 12 in the morning. Now, I mean, it's not like we didn't do stuff like that as well. There was one night that we were doing a gymnastics competition and we were supposed to be asleep, but it wasn't at midnight, and we could still hear them upstairs as well, so they can't tell us we kept them awake. But things like that really help you to get comfortable with your team. But there were times that I was not comfortable with my team, that I was not comfortable talking to people or going up to them and starting conversations, but I really needed to rely on God, and I found myself praying almost daily, or yes, daily, and almost every time I had to go up to someone, God, please help me know what to say and how to say it, because if you don't, I'm going to choke on my tongue. And a couple of times I thought, well, I just have to ask this person where I'm going to find construction paper for the bulletin board, so I don't need to ask God to help me with that, because I know how to say that. I'll just go up to them and say, Tirna, where is the construction paper? That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. I, as I went up to her and I said something that was not asking where construction paper was. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember she looked at me like, what did you just say? And I was looking at her like, I have no idea what I just said. You know, I'll come back later. <laughs> I ended up finding the construction paper on my own. But it took a while and my team was waiting for me. But if I had just remembered that talking to other people that I don't know is not my strong suit and I had asked God for help, I would have been okay. And now you might think, why do you need to pray and ask God to help you ask someone where construction paper is? That's a very simple task. Well, I think that um, I, what I can learn from this is that no matter how small the task is at hand, I need to rely on God. Because if I try to rely on myself, no matter how small the task is, I'm going to fail. And that's the thing about service adventure. We're working for something bigger than us, bigger than our group, bigger than the schools we represent. We're working to minister to people and to kids about God. Now, we might never see those kids again. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll go back and visit them. But we, it's very likely that we'll never know what the impact we had on them was. And so we need to dedicate everything we do to God. All the supplies, the, from the construction paper to the plywood, from the scissors to the markers to the jigsaws, all of it needs to be dedicated to God because it's being used for his work. And without dedicating it to him, we can't be sure that it's going to have the impact we want it to have. And we never know how small of an impact or how big of an impact a little thing can have. We had on our bulletin board that we created a little flashlight for the kids to play with because, well, it's going to a class of little kids. We want, them to be, we want it to be interactive so they have something fun to play with, so they will go up to the bulletin board and actually notice it. Well, maybe that little flashlight is actually going to have a kid go up to it and notice it and, hear, and read the scripture and the message we have on it. I don't know. I might never know. Maybe I will. Maybe I don't. Maybe I won't. If I find out, I'll be sure to come back and tell you. <laughs> I'm getting off topic again, but service adventure lasted two weeks, I could be talking about it for eight or more. So <laughs> I have lots of stories to share and 
I'm glad to have this opportunity to share them. I know I won't be able to share them all today, but if any of you have any questions or want to hear more, I'm always happy to talk about it. If you get me going on Service Adventure, it is likely that I will never stop. <laughs> I'll be talking about it till next Service Adventure. <laughs> and then I'll go to next Service Adventure and come back and have more to share. I'll go on to my next scripture, which is Isaiah 51, verses 1. Again, from the King James. All my scriptures will be from the King James, so I'll just say that now so I can stop telling you. This one is about worship, and it says, Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Now, on the first day of Service Adventure, we got these little booklets, and they were to lead us through our devotions, but also in the back, they had a couple pages of songs, all with the theme, The Rock. So, as you can tell, if they give us a book with songs in it, songs and worship are going to be a big part of service adventure, because that is part of service. It's a service to God. And also, it can be a way to serve others, and that's what we did in our, we had what we called team time every day, and we'd prepare a presentation to give in evening devotions. And sometimes we did songs because they were quick and easy, and we didn't always have a lot of time to prepare something. But even then, even though we're thinking, oh, we'll just do a song because it's quick and easy, we never know who's going to hear it and who's going to have an impact on it because sometimes our team time, no, sorry, our evening presentations didn't take place in just devotions with the other members of the team. Sometimes we had them in the church because they have a midweek service at the church, and instead of having devotions with Mr. Tim that night, we went to the church. And we did our presentations there for the whole congregation. That was also a little nerve-wracking at times, especially when we didn't expect it. And Miss Jean goes up and says, okay, and now we'll have the blue team. And the blue team's looking around like, did you know about this? I didn't know about this. So as I said, singing and worshiping, as well as shouting at times, are big parts of service adventure. We'd sing while we worked. We'd sing in the car on the way to the school or to Missionary Flights International where we served. I have a lot of stories on that I'll tell you sometime. But... We'd sing during our devotion time, we'd sing before it, we'd sing after it, we'd sing in team time. We'd use songs as our presentations. Someone even told me that one of the guys was singing in their sleep. I personally did not hear it, but I mean, I imagine it was true. <laughs> but no matter where we were or what we were doing, you could always find someone who was singing one of the songs from the book or even not from the book. We weren't just doing this because we had nothing else to do, because trust me, we had plenty to do other than sit around singing. But we sang for a purpose, and we sang because we knew who we were serving, and we wanted to worship and honor him, because we knew it was God who had brought us all there together. We knew it was God that chose this group of people who are probably never going to be in the same place together again. We knew that we were chosen by God, and we wanted to worship him for it, and show him that while we were serving others, we were there serving him and worshiping him. Now, if I were to summarize what I feel these three verses, or four verses, were saying to us during service adventure, I would say this. Trust the rock. His work is perfect, he is just, and he is right. Trust the rock. He is God. He is your strength and power. Praise the rock, all those who trust and dwell in him. So church, today I'm going to say to you, trust the rock. His work is perfect, he is just, and he is right. Trust the rock. He is God. He is your strength and your power. Praise the rock, all those who trust and dwell in him. Now, I have one more story to share with you. And this was requested by my friend Ines. I called her. I, we were doing a service adventure call on Friday night with some of our members. So I said, well, guys, I'm going to be sharing with my church about service adventure. Now, do you guys have any specific stories that you want me to share? And she said, well, you want to probably make your church laugh a little bit. So I want you to share the banana story, which is what she dubbed it. Now, as I mentioned before, each night in evening devotions, we have a team presentation. One night, we had decided we were going to prepare a skit, and our theme for the skit was the, dis the distractions. I almost said destructions, which up a couple of people had been saying destructions instead of distractions, but it was distractions of service adventure and how to avoid them. So Ines had been chosen to be the person who was going to be tr 
showing us how not to be distracted, while the rest of the members of the red team were trying to distract her with all different things, like maybe it was the different people on the teams or that were just being weird and doing weird things that they shouldn't be doing, or maybe it was the fact that you were so tired and you wanted to sleep. Well, me and my friend Mitchell, or as we call him, Flitchell, because we're flamingos, so we have to have our name starting with FL, so he's Flitchell now. Anyway, we were distracting her with food and snacks because there's just so many different things that you can eat at Service Adventure because there's 30 of us, there's always food in the kitchen to eat, and you could sneak in there and take something, although you probably should not. So we come in, and she's sitting at a table trying to read her Bible, and we come in with our arms full of granola bars and chips and candy, and we throw them all out onto the table, and we're pushing them at her saying, you should eat this, you should eat this, it'll give you energy, you won't be tired, it's so delicious. And she's saying, no, 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 I have to read my Bible. She's politely declining, we're not so politely ignoring her declining us. And so once we had dumped out all the chips right onto her lap, Mitchell pulls out a banana, and he unpeels it, and he smashes it right in her face. And it got all over the place, in her hair, all over her clothes. But this actually worked out well for our skit because Ines, amazing, amazing Ines, rolled right with it, kept going on with her lines expertly. I don't know how she did this. It was ignoring the fact that she had banana all over her, thanks to Mitchell, and went right on with it, not getting distracted somehow. So she really was the perfect person for that. And even though we did not expect to have banana smashed all over the place during that skit, it really helped us to prove our point and to show that there are ways to avoid distractions, no matter how big the distractions are. Now, I'd consider having banana in my hair a big distraction, and I would be focused on getting it out of my hair as quickly as possible. So she was a she was better suited to that role than I was. I'm very glad I was not chosen for that, because I would not have sat there with banana in my hair and continued with the rest of the skit. Now, we were only halfway through the skit at that point. She had to go through six more people coming to her and saying, trying to distract her, simultaneously not being distracted by banana all over her and other people trying to distract her. I would have been so distracted, so I'm glad I wasn't chosen for that. But it helped us to prove our point. And it also helped to illustrate another point, because Mr. Tim, he did our evening devotions almost every night, and he taught us to call things that happen like that sugar cookie moments. He also taught us that the sugar cookie moments much like sugar cookies, do not last long. They won't last your entire life. And although you will have many sugar cookie moments in your life, they will pass. And if you just shrug it off and keep walking, everything will turn out fine. So our skit helped to illustrate two points. We didn't even know it was going to do that at the time. And this illustrates one of our scriptures again, that God is in control and he has a perfect plan, even if we don't see it at the moment. I actually did not notice that our skit illustrated the sugar, sugar cookie moments points until I was writing this to share with you. So it took me a little while, but I noticed, and now I'm able to share that with you. Service Adventure was an incredible experience. I learned so much, not only about how to serve and witness to others, but also about how to serve and trust God. Now, as I close this message, I'm going to share with you once again what I said before. Trust the Rock Church. His work is perfect, he is just, and he is right. Trust the Rock Church. He is God, he is your strength and power. Praise the Rock, all those who trust and dwell in him. And don't get too worked up over the sugar cookie moments of life, because much like sugar cookies, they're not going to last forever. And when they're done, you'll be able to learn something from it. We had many sugar cookie moments at Service Adventure, but we were always able to learn from them and step up from them. From them. And now sometimes if a sugar cookie moment knocked us down, literally or figuratively, we needed help from our teammates to pull us up. But we always had our teammates there to pull us up because we were a family, and that's what family does. Are you not going to share pictures with us? Oh, I forgot about the pictures. <laughs> okay. Well, they're, they're going to be on the screen then. You can tell us what they mean, okay? Thank you. Oh, okay. So this photo is of us at the school. 
So you can probably see that's me at the end, and that's my friend Karen. And we were playing games with our friends Hayden and um, Sophie. Um, it turns out that fourth graders and f first and fourth graders are much better at Connect Four than any of us teenagers because not a single one of us could beat Hayden at Connect Four. So that was the school. Now this is us doing the confidence course. We had to do the confidence course every morning before breakfast. And it's an obstacle course that tries to get us to help our teammates and rely on each other and also gets us to grow physically, which was one of the points of service adventure. This is when we're working on building bulletin boards and using the tools that some of us weren't comfortable with. You can see the drill on the end. The one second least likely to hurt you. Now this night was one of the nights that we had to work very, very long. We had to work almost all night because we had to finish our bulletin boards, finish our offices and scoring stations so we could take them to the schools the next day. And so we did a group photo of us celebrating that we finished. This is us trying to build the bulletin board again, but being very confused, that's why we have two of our leaders there trying to show us what to do. This is quiet time, which we had every morning before the confidence course, where we'd read our scriptures that were assigned to us for the day, memorize a verse we had chosen, and recite it to the other team. Now this, I think, really shows the spirit of service adventure, how we're all working together, and now sometimes only one person might have a rain poncho to cover themselves from the pouring rain, which came every single day, but that didn't matter because it could help keep two people dry. This was taken on the last night during our banquet. Now, um, those are the bulletin boards that we made to give to the school that was hosting us and that we were staying at, and then with, that's our whole team with the pastor and his wife. Oh, this is the red team at the school that they were serving at and build, working on building the offices. This is before the rain came. Like about five minutes after that photo was taken, we all had to pick up what we were working on and run to that building you see on the far side. <laughs> this was our team time when we were preparing our skit on the distractions of service adventure. Wrapped in the blanket is Esteban, and he was showing us how being very tired can be a distraction. This is us again, after we had moved all our supplies from the school when the rain started, working on building an office in a very cramped space. So as you see, everyone's all packed together. That's because that's about as much space as we had to work. This is building and working on our puppet backgrounds, backdrops. Now, I never realized how involved it was to build a puppet backdrop. I suddenly have a lot more respect for the people who designed the VBS backdrops because they are much bigger than the ones we were working on for our puppets. This is the bulletin board we made to donate to the school that the red team was serving at and we're showing it to the kids and they're playing with the little flashlight I told you about. Again, this is the confidence course. And if you've seen a football practice or maybe a movie about f um, football players, they have to go through those tires and go through with one leg in each. Now, most of us, our legs were too short to do that, so we had to put both legs in one tire and hop to the next and hop to the next, like flamingos might hop around. And all of us had to get through that before we could go on to the next obstacle. Now, this is us at Missionary Flights International, I believe. Now this was the kitchen prep team. Now there were two teams. Each team was divided into three kitchen teams. My team was, my kitchen prep team was yellow and on that day we had made spaghetti. Something I'm very good at making because it's not very involved. These are our fearless team leaders, Mr. Tim from the blue team and Miss Katrina from the red team. This is our fearless leader, Miss Jean. Now, that's her special instrument that she brought with her, and she had that in devotions, and she would play that while the rest of us would sing. Now, I never knew you could sing while playing an accordion, but apparently you can.
Thank you, Sarah. It was awesome to hear about all those adventures, and I trust that you caught the, um, the heart of what it is to serve the Lord. And I was thinking as she was sharing, and I'm not going to go and preach now on top of her wonderful sharing, but I just thought of Ecclesiastes 9.10. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, with all your strength. And I think that's what Sarah did. But that's not just Sarah's call or Sarah's verse. Or that is our... It's an instruction that comes to us. We don't go on... None of us are going on service adventures in the near future that I know of. But every one of us are leaving this building and will find something that our hands will be doing. Let's do it with all our might and do it for the Lord. Amen? Because that is... That's our first step to be a missionary, to be in service for God, is do what a hand finds to do and do it for God. And if you can't do it for God, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> right? Amen? That's how we keep ourselves out of trouble and keep ourselves in service. Awesome. It was amazing. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing with us that great adventure that you had, and I hope that... There's a lot more of us inspired and saying, when can I go? Where can I go? What can I do? Well, VBS is coming. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might. Um, so I know many of you involved, but if you're not, you can be. Amen. Amen? All right. So VBS is coming July 9, 19th to the 